One day while exploring near the monorail elevator, we see some sort of industrial site on the side of this sheer cliff face. I'm halfway up it because I was trying to climb it, but this caught my attention, and so I hopped on down. This is the Lucky Hole Mine. I came from the west, and from this direction we hop down near to some sort of water pump. Next to this is a fusion generator with a fusion core inside, and a small little shack within which we find a cooler and a toolbox. Next to this is the main shack, Danger Abandoned Mine Keep Out. Skulls and crossbones. I think we'll do exactly the opposite, but first, let's explore what's over by these shipping containers. Heading that way, something catches our attention to the right. Oh, what? Some sort of deer antler totem? The human skull in there. It's a little weird. Nearby, I happen to find the corpse of a feral ghoul officer. I didn't plan on trekking into a silo, but I'll take the code piece to shut off his infernal beeping. Near to these shipping crates are three little shacks, and they appear to be infested with ants. Heading into the first shack, we find a bunch of junk and canned dog food, and on a table nearby, we find the smuggler's stash note. Claire. Grab everything from our smuggling operation and get it to the Lucky Hole Mine pronto. The whole world's going to hell, and I'm betting we're going to need that stuff to survive. Lock it up in the usual spot. I've changed the code to 238963. Don't stop for anyone. I'll see you soon. Gavin. Ooh. Looks like we've got a cache to find inside the mine. We'll have to remember this. Heading out, we have to kill even more ants. And then we can explore the second shack. But this one's empty, save for some minor scrap. Finally, we can move on to the third shack. It has a birdhouse outside, a radio inside, but nothing more of interest. No more notes. Well, looks like we need to delve into the mine. Heading inside, we'd find some lockers to the left. One is locked with a miner's key, which I found on a mole miner corpse somewhere else. I believe these are random encounters. Sometimes we don't find much, like nothing in this instance. Bit of a bummer. After looting as much scrap as we want, we can head towards a door to the west. We again see a keep out sign. Two keep out signs. What on earth is in here? When ready, we can open the door to Lucky Hole Mine. We arrive at some sort of reception area. We see an office desk with a typewriter and scrap laid out, a gas mask on some filing cabinets, and a skill level 2 locked box safe. On a desk opposite the box safe, we find a skill level 1 locked terminal. After hacking it, we find four options. In the first, strange woman. This old lady came by asking for a tour of the mine. Told her no, place is dangerous. But that just made her mad. Kept muttering something under her breath. Had to get the Protectrons to escort her out. I'm going to make a call to Allegheny Asylum, see if they had any escapees recently. Poor woman. I hope she gets help. In the next one, closing up, word came in to shut things down. About time. Hate to see a mine close, but this one is tapped out. I was coming back from shutting down the pumps when I felt someone watching me. That old lady again, but this time she was with a couple of friends. They asked again about the mine. Wanted to see the depths. Wanted me to show them. God help me, I ran. In the next one, break in. I don't know why, but I had to check the mine one last time. Sure enough, the locks we put up have all been smashed open. Look, we don't want it. The mine, it's yours now. Just stay down there, all right? Don't bother us. We won't bother you. Deal? What was it about this woman and her two friends that so unnerved this mine operator? And why did they want to explore the mine? What did they expect to find here? And where did they go afterwards? Could they still be here? The final option is to unlock the safe we just picked, and it's then we notice a note lying next to the terminal. He agrees. Your offering is acceptable to him. What? Okay. Was this written in response to the mine operator's note that they could have the mine? That they were just going to leave them alone? Is that the offering referenced here? Turning right, we find a hallway with a rad roach. Here we find a couple of restrooms. And turning left, a locker room with yet another rad roach. Continuing west, we see that the doorway has been booby-trapped by can chimes. Likely not something miners would have done. Maybe raiders or strange people wanting to explore a mine. 
crossing the tracks, we find a closed off room and the door is chained from the other side. But nearby, we find a staircase leading to the top of this little room. Here we find a rad roach, a sleeping bag, and a cooking station. We can use the cooking station to cook up all our meat before it spoils. And lying on the floor next to the cooking station is a holotape, the Chosen. The interloper is here. I can feel it clearly. Last night, in visions more real than the senses, it called to me, and I go to it now. Signs are all around that I am not the only one to hear the call, though where they have failed, I will not, for it summons me alone in the end. Before I go deeper, for the truth revealed changes all. By its very nature, let it be known, in this world, the interloper has chosen Jeff Lane as the conduit of the unknowable. Together, the hidden reality becomes manifest at long last. Jeff Lane? We remember this guy? We first encountered him while exploring the ruins of Point Pleasant in my video on the Mothman Museum. In one of the apartment complexes, we found his first holotape, The Interloper. If interested, you can watch that video here. In that holotape, he again talked about The Interloper. But what on earth is an interloper? Could it be here? In the mine? Hopping back in our power armor, we can drop off of this platform into the sealed room below. Here we find a shelf. I managed to find a T-51B kinetic servos mod on the shelf. We find an explosives crate, a wooden crate, and a skill level 2 locked box safe. When done, we can remove the chains on the door to head back to the tracks. We have one path before us to take the tracks north. Heading forward, we again see a danger sign. And as we begin to follow the tracks, we hear noises. Gunfire? Dynamite? About halfway down the track, we find a first aid kit and some medics on a table by a lantern. And continuing, we find more glowing ants. Continuing north down the tracks, we find a nook to the left, and on a support pillar near to it, we find a plaque with a turtle drawn in chalk. Is that a turtle? Well, what could that mean? At the end of the tracks, we find a T-junction. We can go east, or we can open a door to the west. Let's try heading through the door first. The door is locked with a skill level 2 lock. After picking it, we travel west on a long tunnel. At the end of the tunnel, we find a staircase leading down to a lower level and lights off to the southwest. Peering through our scope, we find a podium surrounded by candles. Heading down the stairs, just as we're about to explore this podium, we find another path to the southeast. We'll explore up this way first. This path goes up, winds through the cave until we see a locked security door to the left. Just outside the door, we find a keypad. That's right. Gavin told Claire to hide something in the mine, and he gave her the new code. Let's see, what was it again? 238963. Success. But on the other side of the door are more ants. Heading inside, we can see what they hid here. We find a lantern and a ruined mine car, one explosives crate, a crystal vein, and three duffel bags filled with a really small amount of pre-war money. Kind of a disappointing reward. Heading out of the security gate, we can continue down this path to the east. Passing a pillar lit with a lantern, we emerge into a tunnel that turns northwest. As we continue northwest, we begin to hear the sound of mole miners. <laughs> At the end of this path, we find a large room with lockers and tables set out and a locked door to the right. Heading to the lockers, we find a foot locker at the base of them and a small amount of scrap. Turning right, we can unlock the skill level one locked red doors. Here we find another one of those weird shrines set up before a table with a note on it. His blood? The woods gave him life, gave him strength, but the blood gave him purpose. He gathered us. He taught us to share as he shared. There's a ceramic bowl on this table. Were they cutting each other? Drinking or making offerings of blood? 
From here, the path splits. We have to go northwest or northeast. We'll go northwest for now, but let's remember this spot because we'll have to retrace our steps and go northeast to leave later. And here we find those mole miners. After killing the mole miners, we can follow the path northwest to the very end. It stops at a lantern next to two floor mats and another note. His home. His believers united by blood. He told us of our new home, that we would approach the faithless and be denied three times, but that he would open the way. Could this he person be the interloper we heard about in Jeff's holotape? This must have been written by the old woman who came here, denied three times by the mine operator, until he became so unnerved that he gave the mine to her. From here, the path turns southwest, and we arrive in another large room lit by candlelight, though this one is partially flooded. On one of the rocks above the pool, we find another note, his springs. His believers wept, for their new home lacked water, and their throats were dry. He gathered their tears in his branches and spread them upon the earth, and from that came forth the springs. Okay, so these followers were thirsty, and they attributed this flooded water to the interloper. Nearby, we see another one of those strange totems. What exactly is going on here? At the end of the springs room, we find two paths forward, southeast or southwest. We'll start by going southeast. This path winds around and ends at that staircase that we descended earlier where we found that podium. Instead of going to the podium, we went down that southern passage where we found the security gate. Okay, so that did a big loop. Well, before we explore the podium, let's turn back around and this time go down the southwestern passage from the springs. This brings us to another flooded level, which eventually rises out of the water and turns southeast. This path comes right out in front of the podium, so it does another big loop. Looks like all paths lead to the podium. Well, there's nothing for it. We've got to explore this podium. We see pews and booths set out before the podium as if this was a church. Stepping up to the podium, we see that affixed to the front of it are two crossed cultist blades. These large swords appear to be made of some sort of antler and a beaten serrated piece of metal with runes carved in it. It's a medium weapon. It's pretty interesting looking, but there are no mods for this weapon, which makes it less useful compared to others. Behind the podium, we find the lucky hole key. And turning around, we find a coffin. And on top of the coffin, a note, his priestess. Blessed are you, first priestess of the wood. Through you, we heard his voice. Through you, we gained his strength. Could this priestess be the strange old woman who first approached the mine operator? On top of the coffin, we see a human skull and a pair of antlers, but we can't loot or open the coffin. Beneath it, however, we find a footlocker that we can unlock with the lucky hole key. Behind the coffin is a waterfall and another large totem. As we get closer, we see an opening in the rocks to the southwest. Peering closer, we see some sort of blue machinery back there, possibly some of the pre-war water pumps that the miners used down here. And then turning west, we see another hole, which again leads to some sort of chamber back there. This one, however, is flooded with water. I wonder if we can find a way back there. But how? Hopping down to the pool, we can leave. But wait, what's this? A face? A big metal face beneath the waterfall. Wait, this doesn't make sense. This is a mine. After the war, people didn't have the technology or means by which to make these big metal faces, let alone drag them all the way down here into the mine. And before the war, this was a simple mine. Why would the miners put a big face here? The only logical explanation is that they didn't. That they found it here while excavating, which means this is some sort of prehistoric relic? But we can't interact with this face. It doesn't have a switch or a button to press. No secret door to get to that back room. Heading back to that first hole we found, if we peer past the blue machinery, we see something back there. A table, candles, containers, and a truck. We must have missed something. There's got to be a way back there. Turning around, we can retrace our steps back through the mine. We don't find much until we pass into the tunnel where we found that security door. Just before we find the security door, if we examine the walls closely, 
we see a bunch of sticks and plants partially obscuring another opening to the right. We see light coming from beyond the opening, and we can walk right through the plants. This path is barely big enough for us, and it's lined by still-burning candles. The path goes south, then turns west. It continues to wind through the rock until it opens up into a large chamber. This is the chamber we saw from the hole on the other side of the waterfall. Sure enough, there's that blue pre-war water pump. On the shelves nearby, we find a lot of chems, buff out stim packs, and in one of the carts, we find the ritual bindings. This is just a unique costume. It has a DR of zero. On a table next to this, we find a bobblehead next to a chem box. By the machinery, we find the steamer trunk, and lying on top of a console next to the big water pump is the cultist dagger. This is similar to the cultist blade. It's smaller, it has a fast attack speed, and it does 60 damage. It appears to be made from the same type of strange beaten metal and some sort of jawbone. On top of the console, we find the ritual mask next to some orange mentats. This mask has no combat bonuses, but it's a unique collectible. It appears to be made partly out of a human skull, a sack hood, and some antlers. Behind this console, we find a chalkboard. Syringe plus buff out equals fun? Okay. But buff out is a steroid that comes in pill form. Uh, y you don't inject it in the game. Perhaps these cultists didn't know that, even though they apparently loved it. Nearby, we find a chemistry station, which we can use to scrap our junk. And that appears to be it for Lucky Hole Mine. We see that opening to the right, which leads to the pool of water that we saw through the hole behind the waterfall. But there's nothing back here. To leave, we can turn around and go back up the tunnel. However, as we are leaving, we notice another bunch of roots and bushes against the wall to the right. Creeping forward, we pass right through them into yet another tunnel. This one leads down, even further into the mine. This one is even narrower than the last one, and we find only one candle as we clamber through. At the very end, this tunnel opens up into another large room. Hopping down, we see bones. Huge bones, larger than a human, larger than any beast I can think of. And then we see it. Lying in a pile are half a dozen human skeletons some of which still have muscle clinging to them. The remains lie at the base of a large obelisk, upon which is another totem made from a human ribcage and antlers. Around it are a few smaller totems, and lying on the ground next to this, what is that? Some sort of tree? Plant? Some roots? Though the roots don't look very root-like, they look more like tendrils. <laughs> and they move. It's alive. This thing is alive. But what is it? Is it a plant or an animal? If we shoot it, it bleeds. What is this? Next to it, we see, what are those legs? Are they legs? Sure enough, it bleeds. The form begins to take shape. These are the legs. This is the torso. And for a head, it has some sort of weird tentacle thing. It has stubby arms sticking out of its back. And its feet are buried in the rock. Right beneath... Oh! <gasps> faces. More of those metal faces. How many faces are here? One, two, three, four, five... They're partially covered in roots, but I think there are five metal faces here. There's no way anyone pre-war or post-war could have dragged these down those tiny little tunnels. I suppose they could have been forged here, but where's the forge? Where are the tools? They must have been unearthed here. They must have been lying here for God knows how many thousands of years. But what exactly does all this mean? What happened here? Taking a look at the pile of bodies, we notice that next to them are a bunch of small glass jars and a sickle. Could these be the remains of the very cultists who erected all of these totems? The very people who wrote all the notes, who accosted the mine operator. Could they have come down here and drunk a poison in some sort of mass suicide? 
And what's with the sickle? Were they using it to cut each other? To offer up blood sacrifices to... this? But maybe their sacrifices worked. Maybe that's why it's still alive. Breathing. Twitching. Bleeding. Did they die so that it could live? Well, I think it's about time we leave the Lucky Hole Mine. Retracing our steps through the narrow passageway, we arrive back at the cultist church and make our way up the tunnels towards that red double door that we picked. From here, there was one path we didn't explore, and that was to take the shaft to the northeast. We see that part of this tunnel has been boarded up long ago, and we hear more sounds of mole miners. Creeping forward, we see another totem surrounded by candles. There are sleeping bags next to a big crate, and upon it, the note, his birth. He is the one who came before, the firstborn of the wood. Blood wept from his branches, and he shared with all his believers. Perhaps this is where they got the poison that killed them. And this explains the sickle we found. They used the sickle to cut open the interloper to collect the poison they all drank. This plant creature, first born of the wood, produced a sap or blood that the cultists then drank, that they shared in a ritual suicide. Or was it a ritual sacrifice? The shaft turns south. We see a nook off to the southwest with mole miners. And some ants. Turning right into the nook where we killed the mole miners, we find a skill level one locked explosives crate. But this is a dead end, so turning around, we can turn right to continue down this shaft to the south. The shaft climbs up and up. We pass lots of scrap on either side as we continue to climb, and it ends at that intersection we found at the very beginning of the mine. There's that blue double door that we picked when we first arrived, which means to leave we need to turn left and continue up the tracks to the south. Sure enough, we pass that plaque with the doodle of the turtle on it, and eventually, we find the door. We can head back outside and breathe a sigh of relief. But what exactly did we find here? Was this the interloper we heard about in Jeff's holotapes? Did these cultists all really commit suicide? And we found Jeff's first holotape near to the Mothman Museum. Does this interloper somehow connect with the Mothman? And if so, how? To answer this question, we have to connect the dots between other holotapes, notes, and ritual sites we find in West Virginia, and that will require a dedicated video. If you don't want to miss it, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have and you feel like you're still not getting YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. What are your thoughts on the lucky hole mine? What do you think really went on here? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I have a shirt shop with completely unique designs you can't find anywhere else. My shirts come in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes and in a wide array of colors. You can find my designs on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon for a follow-up video on what exactly is the interloper.